Welcome. It's time for the further adventures of Indiana Jones. Sharing your adventures is an interesting experience. Pack your bag, grab your passport, and prepare to go globetrotting with Marvel Comics' classic four-color adventures of Indiana Jones. Jones? Jones! Dr. Jones, the eminent archaeologist. Hard to believe, isn't it? Ouch. No. What shall we talk about? I'll tell you what we're going to talk about. Just one of the greatest comic book series of the past 30 years is all The Further Adventures of Indiana Jones. Welcome to all of the IndieCast listeners to this brand new segment. I'm Joe Stuber here in the States, and joining me from the land of several indie adventures, Austria, is Keith Voss. Hello, Further fans. Welcome. And we hope you like the opening music. It's from an artist from France. His name is Sylvain Clux. And he did a pretty cool indie cover, I think. What do you think, Joe? Uh, a little headbanging indie. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, me and, too. Uh, he was nice enough to, uh, to allow us to use that, so we appreciate that. It's and, very cool. Uh, feel free to He's visit. He's got some pretty website. cool other ones out there, too. He's yeah, got, the Godfather uh, you know, one was pretty good. I like the Pirates one. I was really <laughs> uh, impressed with that. The Pirates is pretty good. Uh, James Bond, Star Wars, and my personal favorite, besides indie, of course, was the one he did for the Monsters. I have yes. a little soft spot for it, so... Thanks a lot, Sylvain Klux. Uh, maybe you want to check out his website at www.sclox.com. And, uh, yeah, give him a shout. Tell him you heard him on the IndieCast. And you probably uh, recognize Keith as the voice of Sala on the radio dramas. Bad dates. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, just had some bacon-wrapped dates tonight for, for uh, a snack after dinner. Those were quite some, How were some good dates. Good dates. <laughs> now, some listeners uh, might recognize our voices, Keith. We've been on the IndieCast uh, quite a few times. And then we started working on the read-alongs. We both realized that we had uh, our love for this comic series. Keith adapted issues 9 and 10. Uh, further Adventures of Indiana Jones for the radio drama. Uh, so we kind of figured that we had this love of this comic book series and realized, well, why don't we just record some of these conversations and see if it makes a good segment for the IndieCast. Yeah, absolutely. We even started a Facebook page, too, and we, we got a lot of people on board for that. Uh, found a lot of uh, cool lost artwork. We you know, we posted a cover gallery. We have all kinds of cool stuff on there. So if you guys want to check out the Facebook page as well, just look up the Further Adventures of Indiana Jones on Facebook. You'll find us there. And, um, yeah, give us a like. We definitely want to hear from the listeners as well. We want this to be as interactive as, as possible. Uh, we've got an uh, email account for it. You could go ahead and email us at thefurtheradventures at gmail.com. We will go through every email, we promise. And maybe you'll hear yourself on the show at some point. Um, we're going to go through these. Every show will be an issue. So that sounded pretty funny, didn't it? Every show will be an issue. <laughs> we but um, every show we, we will be discussing issues. an issue. <laughs> And, um, yeah, it's going to be very cliffhangerish. So if you don't have these books, um, I definitely suggest go out and get them. There are many ways to get these books. You know the piece I mean. Local comic shops. I mean, there, there's a ton of, of sites. Um, and, of course, the omnibuses that, that has them all collected. So That's the great uh, part. Joe, you, I'm sure you have a few websites for, for the yeah, listeners. Yeah, actually, uh, newcadia.com and mycomicshop.com. And also found a, a bunch of... Uh, single issues on eBay. They have entire collections. Sometimes I'll have the entire run of them. Uh, you've got the omnibuses as well, which reprints each and every one of the issues. So there's a lot of different ways to get these. And if you can't find the single issues, like I said, the omnibuses are a great place to go. You can get them off Amazon from the marketplace. I got all three of mine uh, from the Amazon marketplace for less than 10 bucks a copy with shipping. So you can't beat that. You can't beat Definitely it do it. They're worth it. They're fun stories. Exactly. And what better time to kick off this segment than on the 30th anniversary of Raiders of the Lost Ark? And what better way to uh, get started than with uh, Marvel's jumping on point into the series, which was their adaptation of Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yes, the sometimes much maligned adaptation of Raiders of the Lost sometimes. Ark. Sometimes. Unfairly, um, unfairly maligned. Unfairly, yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's lots of positive and negative points and, and lots to argue about that. But uh, let's get some details about the book first. Um, it was released in September, October, and November of 1981. Uh, the covers were done by James T. Sherman, who did issue number one. And Walt Simonson did issue number two and number three. Walt Simonson also did the adaptation. Um, the pencils were by John Buscema. Inks by Klaus Janssen, colors by Michelle Wolfman, and the letters were by Rick Parker. Um, and the first thing that pops into my mind when I think of the Raiders adaptation is the art. I mean, even as currently as last IndieCast, we were talking about 
the art. Um, Mitch interviewed Jamie Benning, and they were talking about the art in the Raiders adaptation. It's it's just not very good. It's just not very good. Come on, Keith, be uh, honest. Just, How do you really I mean, feel about it? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, for for something like Raiders, I mean, obviously, it wasn't as well known. And it wasn't as popular and it wasn't as it is today as we know it. It was just, uh, you know, a movie coming out. So I guess they didn't really see um, what it could be at that point. I don't know. It, I mean, the reappearing, disappearing beard, like every <laughs> different panel is a, is, is a pretty good talent. I like that they actually, that Buscema actually drew it in to begin with because a lot of, I know some of the Dark Horse series didn't do that. Uh, it just, it would have been nice to have it consistent from panel to panel. <laughs> it almost looks like he takes right. a shave and be in between. But uh, yeah, at least there was an attempt to make it there. I think the best likeness uh, in the entire three issue arc is of Ron Lacey. Good evening, Fraulein. He looks great. The cover looks fantastic. It, I mean, uh, issue number one with uh, Tote's face looks, I mean, it looks great. And it, he remains pretty consistent throughout the series. But I mean, the rest of them are just, just, it's not good. Uh, if, actually, if listeners go back to IndieCast 112, Mitch interviewed uh, Jim Shooter, uh, who was running uh, Marvel at the time, and also Walt Simonson. And he mentions in Simonson's interview some of the deleted scenes that we'll talk about, uh, but also why Buscema's art uh, was a little off in some places, too. He mentioned how they had to have these things done before, well in advance of the movie, so they really hadn't seen uh, too many stills or too many images from the movie. So in some cases it was tough. That doesn't really cover up why on some of the later issues that the art looks a little bit rushed there's not a lot of detail in some things but i'm probably not as critical about it as some of the others have been just i think there's probably a nostalgia <laughs> factor that comes in uh which is coloring my view but yeah you everyone who is critical of the art makes a good point it it, it is a little tough to take in some parts besides the art i mean another big omission is some of the characters uh yeah. no jock no jock i mean no. there's no jock come on I mean, there's so many differences, even just in that opening scene. Baranka lives. He just runs away. There's no jock. It is it is odd to go back now 30 years to look at these things and see all the things that are missing, uh, like you mentioned. But with that, it's almost uh, you kind of get a director's cut as well because there are things that are included. Issue one, uh, Marion's explanation of how she got to the Raven and also the, yes. the kiss in the bar. Uh, we've seen and what she and, and what she did before she what she did before she ran the Raven too. Yeah, exactly. So you, which you is get, pretty. Um, yeah, they don't go into detail, but <laughs> it is there. Uh, but those it are some there. things that we've seen in making ofs and still pictures and things like that. But again, sort of a director's cut there. So we're missing some things, but some things are added in. Uh, and one of the great things about uh, the comics, and you don't have this with the omnibuses, but uh, you have the original ones, but they're back in the States. But I've got the original yes. uh, issues back in here. storage. It, yeah, you get the, uh, the smell of an old comic, which is actually kind of cool. But you also have the advertisements. Uh, which I thought was actually kind of neat. They have the uh, 7-Eleven Super Slurpee Fun Game with uh, a prize of an Atari 2600. So it's kind of cool to look back at those. Uh, 16... Uh, the, the old Bubble Yum and Hostess Cakes <laughs> advertisements. Gotta love those. The, uh, they had a Human Torch adventure, and there were fire puns in all six panels of it with the Hostess Cupcakes. So I thought that was kind of uh, cool, too. Um, one thing that I really liked was um, in, in the actual film of Raiders, you never hear Toad's name, not once. In the comic adaptation, he introduces himself as Tote. Yeah, um, and referred to often. Pretty cool. Yes, and referred to often as as Tote. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, and also uh, let's, let's talking about issue two, the plot. We also find out what happened to Belloc and the Idol. Doctor Jones, again we see there is nothing you can possess which I cannot take away. Yes, yes. Which uh, actually infamous. throws off the continuity in issues nine and ten of Further Adventures, if we get into that. But uh, <laughs> yes. uh, uh, that's, sort of, that's further down the line. Yeah, <laughs> there's a little dialogue exchange at the Well of the Souls, where actually there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of conversation at the Well of the Souls. The the conversation between the two at the bar. When shall I find a new adversary so close to my own level? Try the local sewer conversation is moved to the well of the souls so yes. it's, it's just sort of yeah, interesting have to, to condense the, things down a little bit yeah, yeah totally it's it's completely understandable i mean it's different i mean it's a different take on raiders i agree again going back to issue number two uh some of the things that were omitted again some of the more popular scenes and popular characters things that, that we think of when we see raiders what's one of the first scenes that you think of when you think of raiders for me it's the cairo swordsman In 
Indy pulling out that gun, shooting the Cairo Swordsman dead. That's not in the comic. Nope. nope. Yeah, yeah, and you got to think, you know, was that included in in the original script or is the original script that was received by the comic writers or was it a conscious decision to cut that? Yeah, even the uh, the full fight scene, which we all know the back history of that now with, with Harrison Ford and Steven Spielberg deciding let's just shoot him. Uh, you originally had you know a five minute fight scene going on there. That I don't see in the novelization. That I don't see anywhere in the comic book. So yeah, was it a conscious decision to eliminate that just for the pacing of the comic book, or did it never exist uh, in the original screenplay and that was thrown in? Because obviously the novel and the comic book have to be written well in advance. Well, so interesting. Maybe one of the listeners can uh, can let us know that. Perhaps a, a a trivia Brotherhood search. Uh-oh, cross-promotion, um, cross-promotion. A little cross-promotion there. Um, no Monkey Man. Again, the monkey eating the dates, you know, bad dates. That's not in there. You know, all these, like, really popular, uh, famous Raiders moments just didn't make, just didn't make the adaptation. Uh, issue three. What would you think of issue three? The ending of Raiders is, you know, it's, it's, it's a huge climax. There's a lot going on. Uh, you know, Indy escaping from the Indy Marion escaping from the Well of the Souls, the, the the German mechanic fight, the truck chase, opening the Ark. You know, Indy aboard the Bantu win. There's so much going on in the climax of Raiders, and issue three doesn't give us the German mechanic fight. Uh, Tote goes off a cliff yeah, in a car. Was, yeah. Doesn't even <laughs> very, make it to the end. But, very quickly. Yeah. Um. You know, but the one thing that they do give us in issue number three is the Indy. On the submarine periscope scene, deleted scene. Yeah, it's a, it's another one. Like I said, I would take uh, I would take that and the loss of the German mechanic fight. You know, I could always watch it on the DVD, but we don't have the periscope scene anywhere else. And some of the dialogue uh, was switched up at the end when they're coming out, uh, Marion and Indy down the stairs, and she says, "Well, stick with me, pal." And he's like, "Well, it's not the Ark, but it'll do." And I thought that was kind of snarky. It was a little more snarky than totally. he should have been. <laughs> I was like, why would totally. you end the comic I mean, book with him? You know, you just kind of want to slap him when he says that. Not only that did they, did they change, they changed the whole uh, ending with the actual opening. I mean, Belloc has his ceremonial uh, garb on, and that's when Indy grabs the, the bazooka. And, you know, they, they cut out that whole Indy dressing up as a, as a Nazi soldier. I mean, all that stuff is gone. I mean, I could see yeah. how they, they, like I said, want to try to combine certain things. But it's just when I read it, it's, it's just not the same. Um, I also have to mention they did cut or, I don't know, delete or, I don't know, combine that scene of Indy grabbing the bazooka. But he, n- <laughs> never, he never dresses up as, as a Nazi officer that whole scene of him stealing the you know the shirt and the hat uh is not in the adaptation but if you look at issue the cover of issue number three he's wearing a nazi outfit so obviously they they did the cover with that in mind but uh maybe there was a another conscious last minute decision to delete that whole little part of the film from the adaptation yeah it just seems like a lot of Different things didn't all fit together. But, you know, when you're 13, as I was at the time, you know, who cares? Who cares, right? <laughs> who cares? Um, and it's, speaking uh, of the cover to issue number three, um, does anybody did, – did anybody out there actually win that Columbia 10-speed racer? Um, <laughs> if you did, please write us an email at thefurtheradventures at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you because um, I entered that contest and I never won. You weren't the winner? So, right. uh, <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Uh, so – if anybody knows any any of that uh, any of that story, get in touch with us. And also, one other thing we want to mention too is that uh, for further segments we got coming up with the actual further adventures of Indiana Jones, if you get that Marvel movie spotlight, which is uh, really inexpensive on eBay or some of those other uh, sites we mentioned, uh, Marvel movie spotlight number one, two great features in there: uh, Marvel Comics pinup bonuses from artist John Byrne. Yes. Teasing the uh, further adventures of Indiana Jones. The first one uh, is called Raiders, the Icons of Icamony, uh, which the title was changed uh, for the subsequent issues. And then also on the back, uh, inside the back page, Raiders, the Sentinel, which to me uh, is probably my favorite piece of indie comic book artwork. I don't know about you. Definitely one of the coolest pieces and, and pretty hard to find. I think um, a few people finally uh, tracked down also the, the – um, 
the original one that you were talking about with Indiana's office. Um, I think that was in Masters of Kung Fu, wasn't it? Yeah, Masters of Kung Fu, and we'll, we'll uh, mention that in the in the upcoming segments. But yeah, some of those burn pieces were were tough to find. I mean, I actually, this was I saw that in the complete making of book. Uh, Vindy, they had a, a full color version of it, very small uh, on the one page, and was able to track it down to the inside uh, cover of Marvel Movie Spotlight Number One. So that's actually kind of cool to have, and that springboards us uh, into the further adventures segments and issues, which we'll talk about John Byrne's involvement, brief although it was with that with that yes. uh, run. Yes, brief but 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 pretty good, and and not exactly what he wanted to do either. No, not exactly what he wanted to do, and uh, it's unfortunate. It was uh, he he had a, a couple of really great issues on that, and um, well, we'll talk more about that in future episodes. No, okay, that's it for the day then. All right, well, that's our review of Marvel Comics adaptation of Raiders of the Lost Ark. They're jumping in point to the further adventures of Indiana Jones. And Keith, congratulations on our jumping in point to the further adventures of Indiana Jones, this inaugural segment. It's been a pleasure. It's been a lot of fun, Joe. Thanks a lot. And we want to hear from the listeners out there. So check us out on our Facebook page at the Further Adventures of Indiana Jones. And send us an email. We'd love to hear from you guys at thefurtheradventures at gmail.com. And by the way, I still like Army of the Dead, Joe. <laughs> you would, Keith. You would. All right, well, listeners, get those comics if you don't have them already. And send us those emails, and we'll look forward to hearing from you about the further adventures of Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones.